Hello, and welcome to part two in this short series of presentations to introduce you to social selling and the social seller score. In part one, we discuss why customer engagement is a critical business imperative. Paul Greenberg, author of CRM at the Speed of Light, describes customer engagement as the prevailing theme for business for the next 10 years. According to McKinsey, the number one priority of senior executives in terms of their digital strategy is customer engagement. Not big data, which gets, gets a, a lot more column inches, not analytics, not productivity improvements, but customer engagement. In another study, this one for Salesforce customers, 84% of businesses felt that customer engagement would replace productivity as the primary driver of growth. And the CEO study from the IBM Institute of Business Value described getting closer to and understanding customers as the top priority for CEOs for the next five years. In this section, we discuss just one of the seven habits of social sellers and why it's important as you get started on your social seller journey and consider improving your social seller score. The material is adapted from our social seller workshop, which covers all seven habits and is designed to help you adapt quickly to the changing world of business buyers. Please speak with your artesian contact if you'd like to know more about this workshop. So, on with habit number four, become a brand. As an artesian user, before you go to a sales call, you'll be well informed about the customer as a result of the insights that you've harvested from your artesian alerts. You'll no doubt have reviewed the company brief. You'll understand the basic financials. You'll have reviewed the people's tab, clicked through on LinkedIn. You'll probably have a few bookmarks even to remind you of the insights you've discovered over the prior weeks, even months. However, as sellers, we don't live in a vacuum. Your customers will be doing exactly the same thing to you. And maybe they don't have Artesian, instead they might just Google you. And the question we have to ask as professional sellers, when our customers do that, what will they find? Brands used to be for the business only, and our jobs as employees was to serve that brand. And this is now no longer the case. Okay, when we buy, we inherently trust people more than we trust organizations. And we have some pretty definitive data to support that assertion. This is data from the Edelman Trust Barometer, a highly respected survey of 33,000 respondents across 27 countries. In 2009, a new category appeared, a person like yourself. A person like yourself. Every year, since then, this category, a person like yourself, has continued to increase. In fact, one of the conclusions of the 14th study, the, the latest, was that employees can only strengthen their organizational credibility. And in another study, Trust, Transparency and Technology from the IBM Institute of Business Value, they, what they found was that only 42% of us trust the insurance industry, while 66% of us full two thirds, trust the person we buy our insurance from. All that data supports the old adage that people buy from people. And today, your reputation is online and it's digital. So what action should we take as professional sellers to manage our digital reputation? Well, first and foremost, all of your personal profile pictures on professional social networks should create that first, that good first impression. So, it should be a professional picture taken of head and shoulders, not like this one taken too far away, which obviously come from, um, uh, from a walking holiday. And it should be professional, unlike this one. Let me talk you through the top 10 photo blunders. So one, taking pictures with your pet. Number two, a group shot, even if it's a professional group shot. 
Number three, a photo of your baby or child. Number four, an old photo. It really is going to confuse people when they meet you for the first time if it's not a recent photo. Perhaps a photo on the beach or a wedding photo because it's been taken by a professional. Pixelated or stretched because it's been taken from a, an old uh, lower resolution uh, camera. Too serious. And sometimes I do see these avatars or caricatures of ourselves or even your, uh, your product or your company logo. People want to connect to you on a professional social network, not to your company. And the number one mistake is not having a photo at all. This can create the impression that um, you don't know how to use online professional social networks. It can make you seem out of touch with current technology and trends. You can appear to be technically incapable. And those without photos may be perceived as uh, not belonging to uh, real profiles. A lack of a photo keeps your profile, profile from being 100% complete. And according to LinkedIn's criteria, profiles that are 100% complete are more likely to show up higher in search results, uh, giving them an advantage over incomplete profiles. So having a photo uh, is just one of those ways in which you will be uh, more often found. Okay, so it's not just about the picture. It's also about building a, uh, a social uh, summary and a, and a social profile. Um, this is Jill Comrath. I listen to Jill speak often on the subject of social selling, and I reached out to her on LinkedIn just to ask if I could use her profile, ask her permission to use her profile, and the, as an example of a profile that has been built for customers, not recruiters or future employees. Yeah. Uh, Jill's profile has clearly been built for her customers. Let's take a look at uh, some of what we see. So first of all, it's her brand, not her job title. It doesn't say uh, sales, tr sales trainer. And there's a bit of humor there. Clearly, uh, intergalactically uh, recognized is a, is a bit of an, uh, an exaggeration. It's a great professional photo. It's good uh, head and uh, shoulders uh, shot of Jill. And let's take a look at uh, how she describes herself. So you can see that Jill's not describing her job title. It doesn't say I run training seminars and I have 78% utilization. And, and instead, it describes the value that Jill presents, represents to her customers. She's describing how she can help. And uh, Jill's also used some keywords. So uh, to help her customers find her more quickly or to help her prospective customers find her more quickly. So she talks about sales training and, um, uh, and prospecting. And if you have a quick glance, you'll see that um, Jill hasn't used the top 10 overused words on LinkedIn profiles. And let me tell you what those top 10 overused words, words are. They're creative, organizational, effective, motivated, extensive experience, track record, innovative, responsible, analytical, or problem solving. Jill's steered clear of using overused terms. She's even used actually a little bit of search engine optimization. So there are some common misspellings of Jill's name there, Jill Comrath and Jill Comrade, just to make sure people can find her and can find her quickly. Okay, quick run through of the perfect summary checklist. Never leave it blank. It's your elevator pitch. It's your value to your customers, not your job title. This is, it's been written for your customers, not for the next employer. Be bold, be brief, be gone. Keep it nice and short, but do keep it professional, but don't make it dull. Use a conversational tone. You'll have noticed that Jill, unlike most of us in our, in our CVs and our resumes, is use the first person because it's more dynamic, it's more com uh, conversational, it can convey uh, passion and energy. Use it to showcase yourself. It's not a time to be modest, even if you're not intergalactically recognized. Convey some energy, convey some passion, and use those right keywords. Use a bit of search engine optimization for yourself. And it's the worst possible place for spelling mistakes. So do check and double check. 
And the same is true of all of your professional social networks. The, the egg, this egg, is the default avatar for a new Twitter account. Leaving the default can be a signal, again, that you're out of touch or that you don't care or that it's a fake account. But mostly, it can convey that you really don't understand uh, the technology and that you're not savvy enough to, uh, to update it. Again, don't use a company logo either. Twitter is about individuals communicating with other individuals. Ewan Sample best describes this in the, uh, in the title of his book, Organizations Don't Tweet, People Do. If you have a Twitter, a Twitter account, and if you're using the Artesian service, you'll have a Twitter account, account, if only for listening, then ensure you've completed your Twitter bio. You've got 160 characters to tell people something about you. And actually, a Twitter bio, like this one here, for Jerry Moran, somebody that I follow, follows a certain kind of pattern. It starts with what you do, the kind of thing you're going to share on Twitter. Maybe you'll use some hashtags in your, in your bio, certainly some keywords. And then a little bit about you in terms of you as an individual. So maybe uh, some, some hobbies and perhaps introduce a, a little bit of humor. And you'll see that pattern emerge in almost all good professional, personal Twitter bios. This one for uh, Amar Sheth and Daniel Debeau. Okay, so one final note on Twitter. All Artesian users will at least be listening. So ensure you're listening to regulators, industry publications, thought leaders. Of course, much of this you can do directly inside the Artesian service. And don't forget to add your social profiles to email signatures, business cards, cross-link from one professional social network to the other. So pop your LinkedIn URL on your Twitter profile and your Twitter URL on your LinkedIn profile. Include it in your present at the end of your presentations too. So, but personal branding is much more than your profile, uh, your summary and your picture. It's those characteristics that make, you, uh, that make you unique, but it's also about how you communicate. Let me explain further. In the Artesian service, we provide lots of social signals in order to help you build your brand. Lots of opportunities to reach out to your network, to talk about things that are important to them. Lots of opportunities to focus on the things that are happening in your customers, in your buyers' worlds. And these are just some of them. But when should you reach out? Let me, let me, uh, let me share this chart, which will explain how you can use those social signals to connect with buyers and prospective buyers. So if you blog uh, and use other content, um, Typically, you don't know who's reading it if you, if you use long-form posts on, on LinkedIn. There's no identification. You just know that people have eyeballed, they've looked at uh, your content. There's no identification. But what that's doing in the background, it's building up your, your, your sales eminence, your, your reputation. Then if we just go a little bit further into these concentric circles, if you, if you use LinkedIn, you've got a loose connection. You can follow people. They may follow you back. People can follow you, you may choose to follow them that. It's a loose connection. You, you may never have met these people. You may never meet these people. But it is an opportunity to use insight, social signals from the Artesian service to start prospecting, to start building a reputation with people that, that will get to know you. And then if we think about the LinkedIn platform, they're identified contacts. You know those contacts are. You've connected with them. They've connected with you. You know who they are. You've probably met them for the most part. These are relationships in which you're nurturing. These are professional net, network relationships where you're continuing to stay in touch, but just to maintain the relationship. And then direct communication, either telephone or email, uh, or all those active contacts, perhaps they're active sales campaigns. You're engaging with those contacts. And all of these, all of these styles of communication can be conducted on the artesian service using 
social gestures which are embedded in every single piece of insight. So when should you use those social signals? Well, just in terms of the depth of the relationship, but the, when specifically? So again, build eminence and reputation, to prospect, to nurture relationships, to engage an active customer, to stay on top of mind when a campaign is long, or, or maybe the customer's contacted you recently and they've had to delay their decision for a while. Use those social signals, those piece of insight, just to stay top of mind whilst the situation of the customer changes. And use insights to drive next action. Maybe um, you're expecting the customer to connect with somebody else in their organization, so you're waiting for an introduction. Maybe the customer, you're expecting a, a, a purchase order from a customer. Instead of just sending that chaser email, nobody likes to be chased. Use a piece of insight, use a social signal from the artesian service just to you know, drop into the customer's inbox. And uh, it's surprising how many times um, you know, just reaching out and providing something of value to the customer that the next email you get back will, will, will be their next action. It will be that personal order number or it will be that email that introduces you to uh, somebody else in their organization. And use that communication, use those pieces of insight to build your brand. In Artesian, that means you know, being trustworthy. Read that insight, understand that insight. Don't, don't blind share insights just because you think it might be useful. And be human. Let your personality shine through. Change, even, even though there are, there are defaults that we can set up in the Artesian platform, I'd encourage you to change those defaults, change that templated text, and write something that's from you and play the long game little and often don't you know reach out to customers just when you're you're panicking at quarter end use artesian to build that reputation prospect nurture as well as engage and give to get give for no other reason than being generous in your sharing give because that you think that piece of insight will be useful to your to your buyer or your prospective buyer use market insights um, you know, share about your customers' customers. Uh, help your customers um, when you're using the Artesian platform. So, thank you for listening uh, to um, uh, one of the seven habits, uh, an introduction to building your personal and professional brand. Thank you very much for listening. Please check out uh, part one, uh, social selling impetus, and part three, an introduction to the functionality of the social seller score. Thank you.